Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 75 meter long train begins uniform acceleration from rest. The front of the train has a speed of 23 meters per second when it passes a railway worker who is standing 180 meters from where the front of the train started. What will be the speed of the last car as it passes the worker? And they're given a, or we're given this figure here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is explain what's going on here. So we have this train. We know it starts 180 meters from this guy right here. And so this guy and this guy are the same thing. Just keep that in mind. They're just at different points in time. So the, it's kind of confusing how they drew it. But essentially, it starts here 180 meters away. It's going to start from rest too. So at this point, it's 0 meters per second. It's going to accelerate, right? It's going to travel, travel, travel. And eventually, it's going to become at this point where the, the front of the train is uh, right at the front of the, or right where this guy is. And we know its speed at this point is 23 meters per second, okay? And then the train obviously is going to keep going like this. And eventually the back of the train is going to be where the guy is at. So the, imagine this is the back of the train right here. And we're trying to find its speed right here. And so that's what this is right here. This is the drawing at which the back is at where this guy is. So we're basically trying to find the velocity when it is fully past the guy. So how are we going to do this? So the way we're going to do this is first, we need to find the acceleration of our train here. And they tell us uh, the train begins uniform acceleration, which means the acceleration is going to be constant throughout. So its acceleration here is the same as any point in time. So we need to find what acceleration is. And how are we going to do that? So we're going to use kinematics. The way I always like to start my kinematics is I do a given. So I say given. And I'm going to write out my five main kinematic variables and determine which ones I'm given and which ones I'm not. So the five main are delta x. And so when I'm referring to x, I'm referring to uh, this axis right here. So basically, just imagine it's basically uh, the change in position. So how far our distance traveled is. And delta just means change in. Uh, and then we have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. So these are your five main variables. And let's determine which ones we have. So I don't know why I put a question mark there. Let me erase that. That was an accident. Um, so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find um, acceleration here. So we want the acceleration. So I'm going to say A equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find. And so keep in mind, uh, the interval we're going to be focusing on is from here to here. So this whole interval is... Uh, what we're doing the kinematic equation for because you always pick an interval to solve a kinematic equation so uh, we're trying to find the acceleration during this interval but it's the same here so because it's uniform um, and so what is the change in position during this interval so we know it's going from here to there so it's change in position is 180 meters so delta x is 180 meters what is its initial velocity so at the beginning of this interval from here to there is zero meters per second, right? Because they tell us it starts from rest. If something's at rest, it's not moving. Therefore, it's zero meters per second. Next is the final velocity at the end of this interval, which is 23 meters per second. So we start at zero and we get up to 23, right? Because they tell us the velocity at this point, 23 meters per second. Uh, and then we actually don't know the time. We don't know how long this is going to take. We can find it, but we're not going to be using it. So I'm just going to cross it out here. So it's not very useful. Um, and now we have three kinematic variables. And the way kinematics work is you basically need three variables in order to solve uh, any of the equations. And so once you have three, uh, we can solve for A here. So uh, what I want you to do is Google your kinematic equations. Hopefully you have them memorized by now. But if you don't, uh, just look at them and just try and decide which one we're going to use. And so the one we're actually going to use is this one right here, V squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a multiplied by delta x. So this is uh, one of the kinematic equations, which basically tells us the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2a times the change in your position. And so uh, the reason we're using this one is I know I need to solve for a, and I'm given v, v sub 0, and delta x. So since I have these variables, I can solve for a. And that's the reason I chose this one. Um, and now it's really just a matter of plugging the variables in and solving. So uh, v is going to be 23. So 23 squared equals v sub 0 squared, which is just 0 squared, right? which is still 0. So 
this term basically goes away. 2 times a multiplied by your change in position, 180. So 2 times 180 is 360. So I would just go like this. So I have 23 squared, uh, and then I'm dividing by 360. So you're going to get acceleration, or yeah, the acceleration is 1.469. Units for acceleration are meters per second squared. So we know the acceleration of this train here is during this interval, which is the same as uh, its acceleration here, is 1.469 meters per second squared. And so now I'm going to show you why we actually needed that acceleration. Uh, and the way we're going to do it is we need to solve this interval. So kind of imagine it um, like this. So it's going to go, we can look at it from the front of the train. So the distance it's going to travel is this right here. So basically just the length of the car, which is 75 meters. So we're doing a whole new kinematic, uh, kinematic equation here. Um, where we write out the variables, but we just solve it for a different interval. So once again, delta x, v sub 0, v, and uh, a and t. So from, right, because we're finding the velocity at the end, and it starts here. So we're choosing that interval. So it's change in position, right? You want to pick one point of the car and see where it is later on. So it's going 75 meters, because at that point, the back of the car would be where this person is. So the change in the distance is 75 meters. The initial velocity at this interval is going to be, well, it starts here, right? And then it goes to the end. So initial velocity was the same as the final velocity at this interval. So it's really V is 23 meters per second. That's the initial. The final velocity is what we want to solve for. Right, because the speed of the back of the car is the same as the front of the car. So we're basically just trying to find the speed of the car when its front is right here. So we're trying to find V. And as I said before, we just solved for what we needed. We needed the acceleration to actually solve this problem. So 1.469 meters per second squared, since the acceleration is just constant. Um, and then T is something we don't know and we don't need. Um, and once again, uh, we have three kinematic variables, and we can solve for v, or the velocity of the car, uh, once its uh, back of the car has reached this point. And so, yeah, so all we got to do now is essentially just plug in and solve uh, which kinematic equation are we going to use, uh, just the same as last time. So v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. We're choosing this one again because we have all the variables that fit and the one uh, that we need to solve for. So. We're solving for v uh, to get it by itself. I'm just going to square root both sides. So you would just square root. That would get rid of the square there. Uh, and then you have v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. Um, and then now it's just a matter of plugging it in. So your initial velocity is 23. So 23 squared plus 2 times a, 1.469. Let me move this out a bit. Times the change in position, which is 75. So you're going to do the square root 23 squared plus 2 times 1.469 and then multiply that by 75. And you will get uh, your new velocity is 27.37 uh, and the units of velocity are again meters per second. So its speed is 27.37 meters per second. You can round however you'd like. I'm going to leave it like this though. Um, but yeah, so uh, its speed, once the back is there, is right here. We just found it. So this is going to go ahead and be your answer. Just a quick recap of how we did it is I knew I needed the acceleration to solve this kinematic interval, right? This, this acceleration here to solve for this because we only had two variables, but we needed um, that one right there. And so the way we got that is by solving this, uh, this interval right here. And I knew the acceleration was the same for both. So little tricky there, but once you realize you, the acceleration is constant throughout, you can just solve for it in this interval and then plug it in that one. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that made sense and you found this uh, video helpful.